In 1974, a small island was found in the Bay of Bengal, close to the land borders between India and Bangladesh. Both countries claimed it as their own, and a bitter conflict arose over its control. Even after 30 years, there seemed to be no end in sight to this weird land dispute. Until one day, the island just disappeared. So what happened? To answer this, we need to go back to November 1970. This is when a deadly cyclone hit the shores of West Bengal and East Pakistan. It flooded croplands, it swallowed villages, and it led to the death of 5 lakh people, making it one of the deadliest natural disasters to have ever been recorded. It left behind a trail of death and devastation. But there was something else that it also left behind. The tiny island was first spotted in satellite images in 1974. And by tiny, I mean really tiny. Around 2.5 square kilometers to be precise. The Indians were the first to detect it and they named it New Moor Island. Bangladesh detected it only four years later and they claimed that it was part of their territory. And they called it South Talpati Island. Now it might be hard to understand why this small uninhabited island was so important to both these countries. But see, there's a reason behind it. Now, when India became independent, its borders were defined with East and West Pakistan by something called the Radcliffe Line, drawn by this guy. According to this, India's marine border with East Pakistan was to be calculated by something known as the Mid-Channel Flow Principle or the Thalwick Principle. But what does that mean? It's actually simpler than it sounds. Basically, when two countries are separated by a river, their border is drawn along the deepest points in its riverbed. That dividing line is called a Thalwick. See, that was easy. The river that separates Bangladesh and India is called the Haryabanga, which forms a natural border deep in the Sundarbans. Now, when this new island was formed, both countries claimed that the deepest points of the river lay beyond its landmass, thereby making it their property. See, it became important for both countries to control it because it would increase the area within their border. But not just this, the area seemed rich in natural gas and oil, which made it potentially beneficial for both sides. While diplomatic talks were still underway, things changed in 1981. At that time, India moved INS Sandayak, a survey ship, to the island. They hoisted the tricolor and they set up a bunch of huts and tents. Soon after, that move was challenged by three Bangladeshi gunboats and the Indians had to retreat. India had no choice but to declare the island no man's land until the conflict was peacefully resolved. And that's the way it remained until 2003. On September 22nd, 2003, Bangladeshi media reported that the BSF or the Indian Border Security Force had established a naval base on Newmore Island. And so, tensions flared up again. Now, I'm sure at this point, you're thinking, where does all this end? This is where the real villain of the story enters. Climate change. And like all good villains, it too has a backstory. By the end of the 20th century, it is well established that climate change is a major threat to the world we live in today. According to a study conducted in the Bay of Bengal, the sea levels rose by 4.36 millimeters a year between 2004 and 2010. This has led to a never before seen crisis in the Sundarbans. Islands are literally going underwater. The story of Newmore Island also ended somewhat abruptly while none of the warring parties were looking. Sometime in 2011, satellite images showed that the blip in the ocean which was the island, no longer existed. Closer observations and eyewitness reports confirmed that the island was indeed submerged in the Bay of Bengal. For neighboring islands facing the same future, the problem is bigger than a territorial dispute. There are lives at stake. The Sundarbans are also one of the only homes to the Great Bengal Tiger. Recent studies suggest that if sea levels continue to rise at this rate, these tigers will lose 100% of their habitat and it will eventually lead to their extinction. The story of Newmore Island started with two countries and a bitter tussle for territory. But the way it's ended is a desperate call to save the world from man-made climate change. The moral of the story is that we act fast or we perish. It's that simple. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. The kinds of videos we want to make are to ask fun and compelling questions, explore weird and intriguing stories, and delve into secret histories. So if that's something you're interested in, this is the channel for you. Don't forget to tell us what you like in the comments.